something is morally right or wrong because it hurt the consequences? It's kind of weird. After 9-11 in my country, when what, over 2,000 were killed, most people don't realize that very few Americans were killed. It was, I mean, there were more Canadians killed, I think, than Americans. And other countries were killed in the World Trade Center uh, bombings. And I wrote a book, a digital book, on uh, America and the church has lost the right to judge. And what I did, I went and got a lot of the history books in my country, it'd be the same in your country. History books, world history, civic books, everything, where they deal with right for wrong. I took 17 books from middle school up. Every single one of them said the same thing. I very seldom am I surprised by research. This one's probably one of the first times I was caught totally off guard. And I wonder if most parents have ever read the textbooks of their kids at school. I doubt it. World history and human experience. How to make moral choices. Evaluate both the positive and negative consequences. Second, make a sound decision about which alternative is best for you. Not which attorney is moral or immoral, not which attorney is legal or illegal, not which attorney is best or right or no. Which one's best for you? Every single one did that. Civics for Americans. When faced with a decision, you should ask yourself three, can you imagine teaching a child this? You justify anything. Ask yourself three questions. What are my alternatives? Second, what are the consequences to each alternative? Which alternative do I prefer? All 17 textbooks in my country on making choices came down to what do you prefer? Then how can you ever criticize anyone in my country, it's by no different in your country, for robbing, raping someone? Shooting someone, aiming someone, if that's their best alternative. You taught them. You don't look as illegal, illegal as a right front. No. Look at the different consequences. Which do you prefer? I mean, can you project out how dangerous that is? Al Qaeda, the terrorists that bombed 9 11. I'll guarantee you, they looked at the different alternatives, they weighed the different consequences of a dirty bomb, whatever, and then they made a decision based upon what they prefer. So how can you criticize them? How could you criticize them? Osama bin Laden, in most of the directions he gave, did that. He always chose the alternative he preferred. That's what ISIS terrorists are doing. So how can we complain? To me, at least in my country, we have lost the right. Even the church has lost the right to make moral judgments. Here's one of the problems. When you study neurology, the brain, it's incredible, <laughs> the brain. 100 trillion connectors. Every second, your brain creates 1 million connectors. One million, one million, one, a hundred billion cells. And that two and a half pound of mass, Canada is three pounds, but that two and a half pound of mass. But here's the thing, when a child is born, they don't operate out of their prefrontal cortex. Right here in the front of your brain, is where God created to make choices, moral choices, right from wrong, to evaluate decisions, everything is in your prefrontal cortex. But here's the problem. Up until 25 years old, your prefrontal cortex is not fully operational. You're operating out of the limbic system. 
It's a small area in the back of your brain. It's raw emotions. Your limbic system says, I've got to have it. And about 25 years old, now they're saying 29, scientists are. At about 25 years old, you start to switch from your limbic system around to your prefrontal lobe. This is why one of the two reasons why in my country you can't rent an automobile until you're 25 years old. Why? You're dangerous. No, 20, 23 year olds laugh at that students too. Just look at the stats. You're dangerous driving up to 25 years old. Why? Because you're operating out of your limbic system, not out of your prefrontal cortex. It's one of the biggest problems with your limbic system. This comes in sexually everything. Up until about 25 years old, I don't care if you have three PhDs. It's not a matter of intelligence. It's a matter of wiring. That until you're 25 years old, it's difficult. You can do it, but it's hard to do it consistently to make a decision based on future consequences. You can't do it. You base decisions based upon the immediate consequences. There's a phrase that describes that. I know it does in my culture, most cultures of the world, probably yours. When adults talk about young people, oh, they can't see beyond the end of their nose. Right? You use that here, don't you? What that means is young people make choices, decisions based upon the immediate consequences, not long term consequences, kind of, at the end of their nose. That's what that phrase means. And it's true. Because they can't project out a long term consequences to make consistent, immediate choices. It's not because they're dumb or anything, it has nothing to do with it. It's how neurologically they're wired. And this is why you can't run a car. One of two reasons why you can't run a car in the United States till you're 25 years old. Because the insurance company sure don't want to insure you. It is so dangerous. With the quick decisions you have to make, everything. You can't do it out of the Olympic system. You do that out of the prefrontal cortex. And here's the problem with young people. Up to 25 years old and making choices is based upon the consequences right in front of their nose. But here is something very interesting I've learned. Almost all right decisions are based upon immediate wrong consequences. Almost all wrong decisions are based upon immediate right, positive, good consequences. And then over the long term, it reverses. It's like my daughter. When she was 15, she got a car. Because her school was 45 miles away. And we had to train her so much, she had to do boy better than any 50-year-old driver in all the experience. And then the state of Texas would give a uh, limited license. She could only drive in daylight to the school and back. That was it. No one could ever be in a car with her. Uh, she could never depart more than three blocks off the route assigned, which is totally appropriate. Of course, I added to it, you can't have any drink or anything else. If you have fast food in a car, you're 38% more likely to have an accident. She couldn't have the radio on, why? You're 32% more likely to have an accident, a teenager with the radio on the car. Because you, take, you don't have the experience, you take your eyes off the road, you reach over, you do this, you're not aware of what's going on. And then we had a few other, uh, no cell phone, no this, no that just simply because we owed it to the people she drove by and on the road. So let's say, somebody comes to me and say, oh, yesterday I saw Katie. I said, where? It was up in um, Greenfield. She had a little uh, uh, Chrysler and some friends with her. I thought, Whoa, that's about 30 miles off the route. And so at night she comes home and I'll say, honey, how did that go? Just great, Dad. Honey, do you have anything you have to share with me? No, Dad. Are you sure? I always set them up. No, nothing. <coughs> yeah, I'll let it go a bit. Oh, by the way, honey, were you up in Greenfield yesterday? It's the first few times. Say, How'd you know? I said, you just confessed. <laughs> now, she has a choice to make. If she makes the right choice, immediate negative consequences, she's grounded. You see that? 
right choice, but immediately you're grounded. If she makes a wrong choice and lies to me, positive consequences, she can drive. That's almost always true. That the decisions you make are vice versa of the quality of the consequences. And with young people, they make their choices, right from wrong, everything, almost always based upon immediate consequences, which means immediate positive consequences will result in a negative decision. Whoa. This is very similar to the greatest threat to the cause of Christ in the history of the world, pornography. Now, in pervasive internet pornography, not pornography, internet pornography. It's the greatest threat ever in the history of the world. You always wondered why. Why is a man, as soon as he started watching pornography, willing to sell out his children, his marriage, his family, his job? They've never understood it. Why is a pastor, boy, is this going all the time? Why is a pastor willing to not only sell his family, his children, his church, his ministry? I've got to have it. In the last 12 months, they found out why? Neurologically. They've now found that pornographic images are so novel. They're so strong. This is incredible. Within a half second, those pornographic images bypasses for a grown man the prefrontal cortex and goes straight to the limbic system. Raw emotions that says, I've got to have it. Now it totally makes sense. The prefrontal cortex doesn't play a role. In grown men, grown women, i got to have it. It's kind of what a child is like. Grown men become that way in watching pornography. So they make their choices based upon consequences immediately. I gotta have an orgasm, I gotta masturbate, I gotta have this, I gotta have because the limbic system only says you gotta have it. The limbic system, that it goes right with the man, right by the there, cannot look at future well if I do this, what'll it do to my children, to my family? They can't do it. And on all of our almost every textbook teaches you base it on um, which alternative do you prefer? Porn, porn, porn. Because that's the immediate positive consequence. I have an orgasm. I masturbate. I get all that novelty. Whew. Boy, the church better wake up and start taking porn seriously. 